Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Ah, oh, I've always wanted to say that and I finally can because I'm finally on YouTube. The first thing I want to say before we even get into this video is beware the fake Antonios. Yeah, because I've seen a couple of people pretending to be me on YouTube. Needless to say, it's not me. They've been reposting my TikTok videos, whatever. This is my official YouTube channel. I just created it. Anyway, I'm so happy to be finally on YouTube so I can make longer videos and talk a little bit more in detail. For today's video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you five tips to learn English successfully. Before we get into the tips, let me just tell you this. Everyone can learn English, everyone. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what language you speak, no matter how old you are, you can learn English. So if you're feeling a little discouraged, this video is for you. I don't believe in age limits, okay? Yes, children can learn languages more easily and there's a whole scientific study on it. Well, not just one, there are multiple scientific studies explaining why, maybe because they use the left side of their brain, which is more linked to affections and so on. But regardless, if you really want to, and if you're really dedicated, you can learn a language no matter how old you are. I really, really believe that. So, tip number one, find something that you like about English. Passion is the key ingredient to anything in life. Like Mary Poppins said, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap, the job's a game. And that's true. The reason why I say this is because not everyone likes English. Not everyone is a linguist. Not everyone is into languages and that's okay. You don't have to be into languages. You don't have to love English in order to learn it. When I first started learning English, I I did not like languages. I, I didn't know the first thing about languages. But what I'm trying to tell you is find something, an element, an aspect of the English language that you like and that you enjoy. For me, it was pronunciation. I really wanted to be able to speak a certain way to imitate an accent, in particular the American accent because I really love the way it sounds. I've always loved impersonating characters, doing their voices. I love singing, playing around with my voice, with my instrument. And so pronunciation was the thing that really introduced me to learning languages. So find something that you really enjoy about English. I promise you everything is going to be easier if you do. Maybe it could be writing for you. People love writing stories. They love writing journals, keeping a journal where they write down everything that goes on. Uh, during their day or what they're feeling in that particular moment and this could be really really helpful as long as you enjoy it. Tip number two, constant practice. Now when I say constant practice I don't mean that you need to spend the entirety of your days on a book sitting at your desk. That's not what I mean by practice. We're so lucky to live in a world, to live in a time where we have so many resources literally in the palm of our hand. Hello, the internet. There are so many things that we can use to our advantage when learning a language. There's movies, there's TV shows, series on Netflix, uh, videos. You can listen to an audiobook. You can listen to a podcast. There's countless things you can do to practice your English and have fun with it. This is what I mean by practice. Do some of these things during your day, even if you don't have a lot of time, you're working, you're studying, whatever you're doing. Even if it's just five minutes a day, take a little bit of time and listen to a podcast. Watch a video, watch a movie and do it in English. This brings us to tip number three. When watching movies in English, use subtitles. When I say subtitles, I mean captions, subtitles in English, those kind of subtitles that give you exactly what the person is saying. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I always, 
always keep my subtitles on if they're available. And most of the times, native speakers do that too. Because sometimes what happens is maybe you're eating and you're chewing, there's a little noise in the background, and you can't really hear every single word. So to make sure that you learn new vocabulary, keep your subtitles on. Subtitles are also very useful to learn how to spell words correctly because we know that English is not very coherent when it comes to spelling. You have a word like Q, which is pronounced like a single letter, but then has like five in it. If you're just starting to learn English and you don't feel comfortable enough to watch a movie or an episode of your favorite TV show in English with English subtitles, I understand that you feel the need to use subtitles in your native language, a translation. And of course, that could be really useful if you're just starting to learn English, you're not there yet, you don't feel comfortable enough, and that's your first step. So it's totally okay. But once you feel comfortable enough, make that progress. Get rid of translations. And if there's a word you don't understand, an expression that you've never heard of before, look it up online. It takes two seconds. Just Google it. Tip number three. Hold on. Hold your horses. We've already seen tip number three. This is supposed to be number four. Sorry, you guys. Keep going. Watch cartoons or anything that is specifically made for children. When we start learning a language, we're discovering a new world. So we're kind of like children. We're back to being kids. So we need that kind of language, that kind of baby talk, if you will. Well, maybe that's an exaggeration, but you know, that kind of simple language, that kind of pronouncing words very slowly and clearly, that kind of simple vocabulary, simple, but very, very useful because it's basic words, it's basic vocabulary that we need for everyday life or everyday conversations. I'm speaking from experience because I don't know about you, but I love Disney movies. They're like my favorite thing in the world. Something that could be really useful is watching a cartoon or a show uh, that you were obsessed with as a kid, something that you already know very well. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with The Little Mermaid. So when I first watched that movie in English, I wasn't a kid anymore, but suddenly I was hooked. The next day, I already knew the songs in English because I was already familiar with the character. I was already familiar with the tunes, with the music. So that could be really helpful. When learning a new language, let your inner child shine through. And last, but definitely not least, tip number five is talk to yourself. Now, call me crazy, but whenever I'm home alone, whenever there's no one listening, I'm constantly talking to myself. And this is really useful to practice all the languages that I learned, all the languages that I speak, and I need constant practice because unfortunately, we don't always get the chance to practice with someone, especially a native speaker. They're not always around, you know. If you do have native speakers to practice with, by all means, do it with them. But if you feel like it's not enough, talk to yourself. There's no shame in it. No one's listening. Say whatever you want. Some people have told me, Antonio, but I don't know what to say. Like, what am I supposed to say? I don't know. That's not the point. You don't have to think about topics. You just need to go with it. Go with the flow. Say whatever is on your mind. That's what really makes a difference because by doing this, you also start thinking in English, which is a really important step in learning a new language. Once you start thinking in a new language, it means you're doing it very well. If you don't know a word, if something is on your mind and you can't express it because you don't have the right vocabulary for it, struggle a little bit with it. Because by struggling, by trying to find the right words, we're gonna remember them better. And then of course, we can always look it up. The internet is always there. But before we look it up, let's try and do it ourselves. I promise you, it helps. So that was it, you guys. These were my five tips to learn a language. In particular, we've talked about English because you know that that's what I teach. Of course, I have plenty of other tips, but these were very general. So I feel like these can work for everyone. Before you go, make sure you follow me on all of my social media platforms. Again, beware the fake ones because there are a couple. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in my next one. 
Bye.